Hi folks. In this quick edition of the fine line between stupid and clever, I'm gonna show you the table I built for my Blackstone four burner hibachi table here. It's not really meant to be a hibachi table, but I was always jealous of uh, those guys in the um, uh, hibachi restaurants that could have people sitting around them and they could throw food at their faces. So I thought it'd be a fun thing to build. Um, I built it a year ago. I did record video during that time of the construction process, um, but I just never got around to publishing it. So I'll do it now. And then I'll also show you in the end of how it's held up over the year and some of the modifications I had to make. So enjoy. So here's my three quarter inch plywood. The guys at Home Depot were nice enough to take the four by eight sheet and cut it on the panel saw for me to be uh, 72 inches by 40 inches. And then I've outlined the inner cutout for where the grill is gonna go. And that's uh, 36 inches by 22 inches, but I added a half inch uh, just of clearance between the table and where the grill will go here. So I'm gonna cut these out with my circular saw. All right, so I got my cutout for the grill here. I've got my legs from Amazon, which are really pretty darn heavy and sturdy. So I can almost, I'm right there. I can almost taste the grill right now. Well, that was easy. Um, Essentially, I'm pretty much done, uh, except for putting a veneer on the top of it. All right, so here's how the table stacks up around the grill right now. So I'm gonna leave it the way it is. What do you think, JJ? You agree? He likes it too. All right, so um, I think I'm not even gonna bother with any extra bracing. This is kind of exactly what I was hoping for. And now it's just time to put some uh, veneer on it. I've decided to use cedar because I'm kind of impartial to cedar with a bunch of other projects I've done and it's going to match some other stuff that I'm going to have on my patio. Now the cheapest way I could find cedar was to get six foot tall pickets from Home Depot. These are about three dollars and seven cents each although they were really really rough. I also am lucky enough to have access to a planer at a shared maker space that I, I um, pay a membership fee for so I took uh, about 10 I'm sorry, about 15 of these cedar pickets uh, to the wood shop. I ran them all through the planer to get them pretty nice and smooth. Fine. Plus, I cut them down on a table saw to be exactly five inches wide, and that fits the pattern of the parquet that I'm going to making the top of the table. So I'm just gonna chop these on my chop saw to length, uh, one row at a time, and tack them down with my uh, brad nailer. So here's the uh, roughed in framing of the table with the cedar on top. Very, very simple, a little bit rustic. Um, I do have the exposed ends of the plywood on the sides. I'm kind of happy with the way it is, and I may just leave it as is. This is going to be outside anyway, taking on the weather. Um, I'm going to sand down, you know, some of the unevenness in the edges, but there's a few gaps. It looks like kind of like a nice picnic table. So here's the table after I have uh, run over it with the orbital sander, and I took a round over bit with my router. And I round it over the edges to clean it up a little bit. I'm not even going to bother finishing off the edges with anything different. And then I threw a coat of uh, Danish oil on it. Um, so this was all done in the span of one uh, afternoon. Very quick, very easy project. It is the next day. It's a beautiful, gorgeous day. I got up early this morning and I've now got two coats of polyurethane drying on the main table back there in the garage and I'm gonna make a cover to go over the grill. Um, I just uh, built in a frame with the leftover plywood, um, uh, about two inches tall, and I've just got some simple right angles that I got at the hardware store this morning um, to make the corners of that, and then I'm gonna layer the top of it with cedar again and finish it off the same way as the table. Um, it should look nice.
Here's the basic idea for the cover. It's going to lay right on top of the table. The underside of the cover is going to need a little reinforcement, so I'm going to take another strip and probably use some screws to screw maybe two down the side uh, just to reinforce the center. And then I'll do some sanding of the top here, round over the edge with uh, just round over bed with a router, and uh, throw some Danish oil and polyurethane, and uh, that should be it. So over the year, the tables held up quite nicely. The one major problem is, is that the um, innermost row of uh, wood that I had built was way too close to the grill. It actually puts off a ton of heat and it actually caught fire two or three times. So I always had to be very, very careful when using it. So cutting it back a little bit further, giving it like a full three inches of space all the way around the, the table is kind of a good idea to do. The other thing that was really cool about the modification I made was I got that little black cabinet um, from Ikea and put it underneath on this shelf there. So I actually have storage space underneath the grill for spatulas and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it's made the utility of the grill a lot better. Um, you can actually sit out here and entertain folks while you're cooking. Plus, it gives you a place to put all of your cooking stuff on while you're doing it. So for the minimal expense uh, and um, some serious bang for your buck in terms of utility. The finish has been beat up a little bit over the year. Um, the lid is still doing okay. I did have to add some extensions to the side of the lid so it'll fit over the big gaps on the side. Um, and I also picked up a uh, furniture cover um, on Amazon for very inexpensive. Now here's how the whole table is stored under a uh, furniture cover. It's made for a dining room table, like a patio set. And I think I got that on Amazon. Uh, well, that's it. Hope you got something out of this video. Hope you make one. Thanks for watching.